uh, it's one thing to have the helmet and the content. It's another thing to create it, and that's something you're an expert in. You're a content creator. We're doing some of that. I'm sure you're very interested in creating immersive. Immersive video is different from gaming because it's real it world. Is. It is, and and you know we've been this 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 whole thing has happened very slowly. You know, in the early '90s, uh, I was using um, we were taking pictures with film. Right. And we'd scan the film, <laughs> and then we had the Apple VR you know uh, toolkit. You'd write yeah. scripts that would go you know blend all your. And basically, really, it was a sphere that you could just look around in. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so that was in those QuickTime VR, and we used them for reflection maps for movies, and right. and then. Uh, the video, we thought about the video stuff probably in the early 2000s. You know, you could take a bunch Someday. of little cameras, but we couldn't find cameras that were small enough. Right. Um, and now, you know, all of that stuff is accelerating very quickly. I mean, I think that the thing that if people are interested in, uh, you know, playing around with content creation, the first thing that you, anybody wants to get is this. Is this. I, I was so, so happy is, with that. 350 bucks? Uh, you know, I have some great photos from this. You know, I, I travel around all over the place, and I yeah. have ones of me. Here we go. This is the, uh, but this is the Theta. This is the Theta S, so this, Theta is, the S, this is the third edition. And I have the the last version, and this is you know, obviously a huge bump up from that. Um, I bought I, it. I bought it the minute I could see it. So that's a still. Right, that's a still, and then you can you can switch to video. So I click this here, and uh, I should. Uh, you could just put it, and you could just put it down, and then w I, you could vlog. I was doing vlogs with it on the uh, uh, on our last vacation, and and the thing is, you want to do something where there's stuff to see all around. Right. Right, and one of the things that's that's great about this right now is that you can actually get uh, there. You go. Oh yeah, sorry, I turned I turned the wrong. So you can see it blinking here. So it's doing. A, yeah. <laughs> anybody who's wearing the headset when you do that is going to be like, whoa. Well, the funny so, thing is, when you're using this, you have to get out of the habit of pointing it at the subject. It's right. pointing at the subject no matter where it is, or because <laughs> right. everything is here. So you can stand here and talk and move around, and then you don't have to look into the camera. Yep. The camera doesn't have to be aimed at you. Well, and it's funny because you'll take a selfie, and everyone else in the restaurant or the place it's you're there. At looks, it's but, it. they, but they also look at you like, "Is he just taking a picture of me?" And I'm like, "No, right. he took a picture of me." Everybody and I took you. It. Yeah. Um, and you. So, but the, uh, <laughs> but that you know, the, so, look uh, down because what's neat about that particular this particular device is it stitches out. So he's holding it on a selfie stick. Right. But you don't see it. And I actually have a tripod that opens up right at the very bottom. And literally, you, you see nothing but these little legs that stick yeah. out. You know, so it's, it's stitch, almost it's nothing. Really, in previous e efforts, there's always been a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom. This really is a full sphere, well, and the camera's even taken out of it. Right, and, and the resolution's a little bit lower than some of the stuff that we've seen. But at 1080p, it's a great way to preview things, and the stills are... They're you really know, good. They're almost 6K wide, yeah. so they're they're very very 5600 or something wide. Now, as so as always, you have to pro you can't just take the stills and put them on a site because it's really just two giant fisheye. I don't know. It's eight millimeter or right. even wider pictures. You have to use the software to render them into a sphere, or if you're doing the video, it has to rent stitch the video and make it a rendered video. Exactly, and then you can upload those to YouTube and Facebook. And That's what's cool. Yeah. So you can in the, the past, there. you'd have to go to a special site. Theta has one. Data360.com, but now but, and then you I guess go as of yesterday, YouTube. I think that YouTube announced that they're doing. Uh, they have a. You can now embed them, so you can, you know, of course, upload them. There's a the part of the cardboard toolkit is that you can now inc incorporate it into Android, iOS. Um, you can embed them on your website all through, you know, the YouTube uh, platform, and of course, uh, Facebook's doing a ton of work on it as well. So we have. What, what's also really great right now is that we have two uh, companies that are, uh, ha you know doing a lot of development in this area. Right. But what, but the great thing about this is that, and this gets into one of the challenges we have with these cameras, is the nodal points, uh, if you actually tear one of these apart, it's actually little prisms that go right down, so the nodal point is almost on top of it. And the nodal point is where the, the lens actually rotates. You know, so if you rotate around the nodal point, you'll not get any parallax, which means you won't get any seams. And the fact that there's only two cameras and they're right on top of each other the, is uh, two lenses and the, and, and the sensors are actually right on top of each other means that uh, the, the seams that you would normally see without any, any work at all, you get almost no seams. The only time you see seams is in low light environments when you're hand holding it because of the, and that is a, um, just a registration between the, the shutters. Um, but but otherwise it is uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, I've taken them of you know people blowing out candles you know for their for their birthday and it's just an awesome thing to send to your family because it's they can rotate around and look at it and and they can see you know your daughter your mom or whatever uh, in the uh, in the video itself. So it's pretty slick. People on uh, the chat room are saying, oh, I don't like the fisheye look of it. 
you're seeing a fisheye look because you're looking at it on a 2D screen. If you put right. on Gear VR or the Oculus Rift, you wouldn't see it. This is this is a video I shot on our uh, last vacation, and that's me. But you know what? You can look at everything that's going on at the same time around me. And this is why you want to shoot this at somewhere where there are things going on. So there's somebody practicing parachuting. Here's somebody practicing uh, boogie boarding. We're on a gi on a giant cruise ship. There's the sky. So. You know, this is a. I think it's a great way to vlog because suddenly you're vlogging and uh, people can see everything in the environment. There's Michael and, and there I am. Um, I think that's just a pretty amazing way to do this. This is with the Theta, but you see, it's not quite as crisp in as video be. as it is in still. Yeah, absolutely. And that's it's why. Tiny. Yeah, absolutely. That's that. It's because yeah, there's so many pixels. Right yep. Yeah. For this, still, it's pretty fun. I mean, oh yeah, and imagine this in the uh, you put this on the in the in the cardboard of the rift, and suddenly you're seeing you're you're in the uh, action. Absolutely. Now it's a video, so it's not interactive. You can't change the scenario. You could just look around. You can experience it. In right. some ways, that's better. You don't get the queasiness quite as much. You, <laughs> well, seriously, you're not yeah. moving, right? Yep. No, absolutely. Uh, unless you do a lot of this. <laughs> so let's make something even better. What's the so next there's step? A, there's a couple different um, steps between that. So uh, one of the ones, of course, is a lot of us started using GoPros. GoPros were inexpensive, and most importantly, they were small. So we're able to put them very, very close together. So a lot of people have these little six uh, camera rigs. Um, you'll see GoPro ha has took it and kind of made it more um, uh, organized. Is and more those, cameras better? Not necessarily. Um, what more cameras get you, obviously, is you don't have to have quite the same uh, fisheye lens, which is going to give you higher quality. The problem is the more cameras that you add, the more seams that you have, uh, and the more, so there's more places where you may, it may not blend perfectly. This does look good, though. Um, yeah, so you can really get some, now, a lot of times when you see some of these examples, there has been some work in post to uh, ah, fix some of the issues. So there's, okay. there's actually a growing business, if you're looking for a new business, of um, paint fixing uh, this kind of panorama. Interesting. So there's probably a little bit of work done with this, given how close they are to things, um, you know, where they took a couple things out and fixed it. Uh, maybe not. There you can see one seam right there. How much is uh, that GoPro? Uh, I don't know how much the GoPro is with, you know, generally you're Didn't looking at Didn't they say like about, 18 grand? I think they no, said. That's, now that's the, that, that um, and here you can see some of the little issues on his knee. You know, you see some yeah. of the blending and stuff like Just that. As you would if you did a panorama and you didn't get panorama, it quite right yep. you, sometimes they're little weird artifacts exactly so so but the uh um the eighteen thousand dollar version so you can build one of these for about three thousand four thousand buy a bunch of cameras and glue them together yeah, and there's plenty of stuff online you can print the, the rig i right. mean we, we printed a lot of our rigs um mm -hmm. and but you can buy them from like three 360 heroes and a, a, you know a, a, a couple other companies um so about three thousand bucks now the eighteen thousand dollar rig you're talking about is the Odyssey, which is something that Google built, and that's 16 cameras uh -huh. uh, wrapped around, and you lose a little bit on the top and bottom, so it doesn't go all the way up and all the way down, but the quality is really high, but you also can't, you, you upload it to the server and let it do its thing. Now, some people are building uh, also with Blackmagic cameras. If you, if you look at the Blackmagic Micro, um, one of the things that's interesting about the Blackmagic Micro is when you turn it on its side, it's 65 millimeters uh, wide, and why right. that's important is that's about the same distance as, that your eyes are. You'll see what the, they have these tiny little cameras, and a lot of people have been, we, <laughs> have been putting um, 185 degree, 180 degree lenses on them. Uh, and so that's another, uh, you get a lot of quality, you, you get a live feed, so if you want to do live streaming of, of that, um, that's another one. And then after that, they, you get into lots of custom rigs, and the, probably the next one that's a turnkey rig is uh, the uh, Ozo. The Nokia and Ozo. this is the Ozo, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. <laughs> so yeah, so this is the Ozo here, and uh, just went on sale. This is from Nokia, of all people. Yeah, just just started shipping a couple weeks ago, um, and what this has is it has eight cameras. Uh, with eight uh, microphones, and so it's able to produce, uh, you know, you know, surround sound. Are these you'll, the microphones? Yeah, you'll these see little... those are the, these are the little okay. microphones there, and uh, and so those are. Uh, now it's got now these le now what's what's great about this that's made it a lot easier in a lot of ways is you know, those are all the, that's the angle. This of all is the, the live output. That's that, the live output. Yeah. Okay, so that's see the, I'm waving over there. That's that's actually live output. Wow. And all so right. and so this is uh, so that way you can kind of view what's going on and see how it's working. Now the uh, and there's a little bit of latency, a couple seconds as it goes through there. What it's doing is it's taking all of those and it's putting it onto one SDI signal, HD SDI signal. And what's great about that is that instead of having all these cameras and this this you know 
trying to figure out how to turn the cameras on, you just hit play or hit right. record, and it's grabbing it from well, one is, video signal. Analogous to the theta, which gives you, if you don't stitch it, this, these two fisheye images, this is just giving, giving you more of them. It's yeah. giving you eight. And these are, I think it's 192 degrees uh, per, per lens, so they okay. see a little bit behind themselves. And they're pretty high resolution, I would guess. Yes. At $60,000, I'd expect that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's, it, it is a... Uh, and it'll 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 also it's able to do um, unlike the theta it's also able to do 3D. Um, you can actually look at a live output there. That's actually from uh, when we, we did a Mac break. This is a stitch still um, from Mac break, um, and uh, we're gonna have the video up and there again, next week. And again, because you're seeing this on a 2D screen, that's why it's like it a Mercator all, map. Yeah, it's, it's kind of Mercator it, projection. Yeah. yeah. But if you were looking at this in a headset, it would look normal. It'd be like you were there, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so and that is one image from a video so it, it can do very high that's the same, very good quality. so it can do the same resolution that the stills right. are on this right. um in video so um so it's uh, it's a it's a pretty slick little the, um camera the interesting thing is as much as that camera is the devices to look at it are not expensive you can use a 2d screen in facebook and youtube as we right. were just doing but if you get a google cardboard device which are five bucks or less exactly even, you can look around within it, and it senses. You have to have a phone in it, obviously. So I guess you should add the cost of the phone. Gear VR from Samsung works similarly. You have to have a Samsung phone. It goes in this headset. You don't have to hold it anymore. It's on your head, much like the Oculus is, and you look around. And actually, Gear VR is an Oculus product. They're using Oculus technology. Right, and the Gear VR is great. We've got a couple of those. I in the really office. like my and, Gear VR. And the, and the new S7 is much better. Um, the yep. ver version. Yeah. And, uh, and, and we use them as we're testing to see how things are going. And and um, and you can now, you know, that what's coming next with a lot of these rigs is being able to stream live. So I think we're going to see. Isn't more of the that. Uh, isn't the NCAA isn't that going to be done in VR? The Final Four, I think. So how would I watch that? Yeah, see that. <laughs> but uh, does that mean I have to have an Oculus Rift or cardboard? Probably. Yeah. Um, wow. The and, and and I think it's, it's only 180 degrees. degrees. Yeah. It is Gear VR. Well, and there's a lot of I'm there's, sorry, there's a lot of people. <laughs> sorry, I walked wandered out of my shot to read the screen. That's so so the, there's a lot of um, talk about whether 360 is required or 180 because 180 gets you more resolution. So a lot of these the, even the streaming tools are you know you're, there's well, a limited resolution. Well, in a basketball resolution. game, I don't care what the people behind me are doing. I exactly. want to see the game. And that game right? can be higher resolution if you only do 180. Yeah. Okay. So so there's some people that are doing Next VR and a couple other companies are doing uh, 180. 80 solutions typically with reds yeah uh, we use the you know black magic um, but the uh, so it's just a, it's just a matter of what you think is important there's a lot of religiousness this is this is the little black magic camera that that we that we a lot these of are pop amazing. lenses on yeah, yeah we have a lot of those so yeah. anyway so the um, uh, those are great because they're hackable as well so if you're developing a camera system you can there's a, there's already tools on it so that I can control the camera completely uh, from my computer, from I can build Arduino controllers, I can do all kinds of stuff for it. So it's it, so fast. This is happening so fast. And it's the nexus of these cameras getting better and better. It's uh, uh, the technology is advancing very quickly. Uh, the software is coming along very quickly. And as you just saw with the Oculus Rift, the ways that we can look at it well, and are I think that, coming along very quickly. I think this is a market that's about to explode. Well, and I think that's what's really fortunate for us is that Facebook made a big move, yep. Google's made a big move, yep. uh, where those two companies have, I think if they hadn't stepped into the crowd, this could have fizzled out again. I think it, the fact that, they, that we have these two giant interactive companies willing to put real money into it, and there's rumors, of course, that Apple is going to dip their toe into it at some point in the future, I, that that's going to help drive it as well as, as big companies deciding that they're going to make it work and not just the movie industry trying to make an extra ten dollars because a lot of times this gets can you know get, it's get it gets talked about in the same light as right. 3d right. but I think there's a lot more you can do with it because imagine with this time you're going to be happy to see a stream from NCAA or um, you know we did some tests with the PGA tour uh, with golf but pretty soon you're going to be able to watch this thing and if you look over to one side, you'll see your email and text going by, <laughs> and then you'll be able to look over, and then you'll it's be able to look, interface. and then like while you're watching, you're going to see, you, right. you might even get to a point where it's, you can say, show me all the players, and there's little names following yep. the players around, you know, and you can say, uh, well, show me the stats, and, and all of the stats will just live, mm -hmm. you know, render in front of you. So it's not that you'd have to put this down to do that. You'd be able to check your email, you'd be able to check everything else, talk to people while you're in staying in that environment and seeing heads up displays of graphics that you wow. call in rather than so so what we're looking at right now is still of course the early stages of just figuring out what to do uh, as this develops and this and what I'm talking about is maybe a year away.
You Maybe don't less. see, and take it from somebody, uh, I've been doing this for 30, almost 40 years. Apple, by the way, happy birthday, celebrated its 40th years. birthday yesterday of incorporation, April 1st, 1976. So that's about how long I've been doing computing. <laughs> and so you, d but you, what you don't see is these big transitions. You only see them every once in a while. The advent of the internet was uh, one right. of the personal computing, of course, was the first. I feel like this is a big transition. There's, there's going to be news user interfaces, new experiences, new content created, all to take advantage of a, a basically a totally new medium. I think we are at the very beginning of one of those massive transitions. And I think if you saw Jessica and Tommy and, and, and Alex and my reaction to the Oculus, I think you can see that it is actually starting to happen. Well, and I don't know if, it, if you've had the same experience with even something as simple as the Theta, is that you start taking pictures with this and, and uh, you start not wanting to take pictures any other way. You're like, I just, you know, there's, I, I still take pictures with my iPhone and with my like, little DXO know, and stuff so like that. fun, but isn't it? I, uh, I, I, um, I was in Germany a couple weeks ago and I, um, I broke my toe. And of course, I I'm sitting in a hospital in Germany, going, "Can I take a picture?" And I'm taking these like <laughs> these like panoramas of the X-ray machine with me well, sitting laying there in the, same in, the thing. in the thing. It was awesome. I went up to the bridge, right? Yeah. And they said, "No video, no video on the bridge on this cruise ship." And I said, "Well, you mind? This is a 360 camera. Can I take a picture?" It's very unobtrusive. You're going bloop. It doesn't look like you're taking, but every detail of the whole bridge. Right. If they had known, they probably would have stopped me. Right. When, when we do sight, yeah. <laughs> But it's what, not obvious. It's so tiny and uh, when, we, when we do site surveys, when we're looking at like places boop, we're about to do production, boop. we just walk around going like not this. A big deal. Just going like this, and then and then everyone can go back and look not at a it. Not big deal. It's great.